Man's Best Friend gets a Chronicle release. Here's a look at the new Chronicle collectibles. This is the Fallout Dog Meat Statue. Dogmeat is a recurring dog non-playing character in the Fallout series of post-apocalyptic theme role-playing video games. Dogmeat was introduced as an optional companion to the player character in the original Fallout 1997 and also made appearances in the sequel Fallout 2 in 1998. Though the dog would also appear in other Fallout games, he would appear in different incarnations, all of which had slightly different appearances to one another. Now, to get this review underway, the first thing we're going to do is measure off how tall the statue stands. Now, I'm going to the top of Dog Meat's ears. That's probably the best place, as that is the highest point on the statue. We're going to stop the tape measure right there. And according to the tape measure, the statue stands exactly 7 inches in height. Don't believe me, it actually is right there. The proof is in the pudding. Now, switching that over to centimeters, for those who follow centimeters as their unit of measurement, you're looking at the statue standing almost 18 centimeters, 17.8 to be exact. For the statue's display base, the first thing we're going to have a look at here, it looks like the dog's four feet are firmly planted on top of what looks like a concrete or roadway pathway, in which, of course, has, much like the rest of the environment in Fallout, suffered some serious damage over the years. I like that it, from a distance, does look like it's real stone. And they've done a good job, actually, of texturing it to kind of make it look like it could be concrete or stone. Uh, like that also you know, over the years and the damage that the roadway has taken, you can see there's a lot of chunks and pieces missing away from it. Even like the outer edge of the display stand is nice because it doesn't look like it's clean and smoothly cut. It looks like it actually could be just a chunk ripped out from the ground. Speaking of the ground, can't help but notice this noticeable fault line crack running across the material itself. I really like that they finished it on the sides as well. You can almost even imagine that this could, in time, separate out from itself as the roadway, like I said, gives way and uh, crumbles away over the time that it's existed. Uh, on the front, you've got Fallout 4. Uh, nice that they've raised the font to it, so I like that it sticks out a fair bit. And then on the underside, you've got Fallout Dog Meat Limited Edition Statue. The Fallout logo up at the top there. Chronicle Collectibles down below that. And down below that is the website where you can head on over if you want to check out some pretty cool replicas and statues that they're producing. www.chroniclecollectibles.com the, uh, the felt feet, a six in total actually, three on the sides on either side give you a total of six, prevent any scratching when you put these statues on any surface, which is small, but always appreciative when they actually do do that. I mean, if you do move stuff around from time to time, reshift your collection. I, I know I'm certainly guilty of that as well. You don't want to run the risk of, especially putting it on like a tabletop surface of causing any bit of damage. The, those felt feet, as small as they may seem, can actually be a great contributor to keeping the statues and whatever surface they're on in pristine condition. 
Now, even if you've never played the Fallout video games before, the idea of a dog looking like this in a post-apocalyptic world seems probably a little bit familiar to you. Well, there's no coincidence to the fact that dog meat was actually inspired by the unnamed dog that Max Rockatansky, uh, Mad Max, actually had from the post-apocalyptic film Mad Max 2. You know, the dog he's feeding the dog food to and, of course, gives to the propeller man. Um, that, that dog actually was the inspiration for why dog meat existed in the Fallout games. They wanted to have a dog companion. And what better of an example to pull from was the original Mad Max films, one of my all-time favorites of the action, or even post-apocalyptic action films, if you want to be even more exact to that. Speaking of exact, I must say, I commend the folks over at Chronicle Collectibles for really giving us a good representation of dog meat from the Fallout games. There's a couple of little uh, cool swap out things that we can talk about in a second, but just before we do that, I want to showcase the face here. There's a fair bit of life actually in the eyes of Dogman. I like the fact also that they've sculpted him with not only fully visible teeth, but quite the visibly noticeable tongue that's sticking out from him. One thing that Max didn't do with his supplied companion was actually armoring it up. And that's what dog meat at least has to the benefit, unlike the dog from the original Mad Max Road Warrior. Um, I think actually the dog did not, I think the dog actually appeared also in uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. But one thing about specifically dog meat is the fact that this one does have armor plating to it. I like that it's crude in nature. You can kind of see how it's been hammered and forged out and very crudely kind of thrown together with complete with a handle up at the top. There's a few little spikes rusted and just decayed sticking out from the tops of the plates. I like, again, the crude nature of that. The fur is done actually quite well. The painting has had nice transitions between the lighter cream color here and closer then into the like the warmer colors of the, of the kind of orangey brown and then the darker brown up at the top there. But I really do think that the head sculpt is really quite good. You can see that it, how everything has been harnessed together on the underbelly of the dog. Very, very strong looking legs and strong, equally strong looking feet, firmly again planting it to the top of the display base. So again, he's got a really good look to him. Not an overly large statue, but something of which, of course, you can put on like a, a shelf or a, a small desk if you want to have like just something because you're a big fan of the Fallout series. You probably put this just alongside your PC. But as I said, there is one thing that you can customize to dog meat, the statue here. And let me go ahead and show you that right now. Yes, yeah, so one thing that's really cool is the fact that Chronicle Collectibles included a secondary head. Something, again, you can swap out. Something a little jarring, I guess, to the idea of holding a dog head in your hand. This is hopefully the last time, the only time I'm going to be doing this in my life. But nonetheless, like I said, there is the swappable option. Now, if you look at the two heads, it doesn't look like there's that much different from them. I know, I know. There's obviously the eye guard and the helmet, kind of makeshift helmet that they put on top of dog meat's head. But other than that, if you look at the two heads, solely just the dog heads, they do look very similar to one another. Changing out the heads isn't difficult at all. Although when I did get the statue immediately out of the box, I did notice that I had to kind of wiggle the head back and forth a little bit just to kind of front finally free itself from the connector point that attaches the head to the rest of the body. To take the head off, you're just going to slide it off. And it's immediately, I was expecting actually to just find a, like a, a cylinder peg. Instead, actually, you get yourself like this cross X shape, which actually has a specific way then of when you're ready to put the head, the replacement head back into place. I'm just going to put slightly jarring again, the idea of a dog head. I'm just going to put that to the side right now. And I'm going to grab also then the armored up head of dog meat. When you are putting it back onto the socket, I just want to show you that there are, is a specific way to do it. Notice that the top does have a broader width to it versus the one that's down below. It means that when you are attaching it, you can only put it on one way. It's not simply a case where you can twist it around. Would have been nice actually if they had used the, not something that would allow the dog's head to twist, but at least if they kept the shape the same on all four sides, it would mean that you could take the head off and rotate it down 
you can have it on either side and you can have it looking on both sides but again ultimately they went the route of making it very specific and unique that it only can go one way so this is the wider part of the narrow part you see there's narrow on both sides narrow at the bottom and it's slightly wider at the top instantly telling you which way it has to go and you just line up everything doesn't take much effort at all and you just slide that down you'll hear a little bit of a snap it's just kind of everything securing itself in place and there's the alternate look then for dog meat there's the two distinct head portraits again you'll probably see that the heads really aren't that much different when all things are said and done but I like that there's a contrast two different distinct ways that you can display the canine in um, personally speaking, I kind of like just the idea of having dog meat without the helmet, but i got to say there's something quite cool to the fact that you can see a dog that's got full armor plating all on its, on its body and also has the armor plating on its head. And like the body, it shares that same similar forged look to it. You can kind of see the imperfections actually in the metal. Uh, great job by the way of chronicle to add like these little imperfections to the metal so it's not just simply paint and silver paint and calling it a day you can see there's slightly darker discolorations around where the bolts would have been more of a rusted look around where the screws and i guess the nuts would have been tightened off there and even like the metal itself there are imperfections happening there little flecks of lighter silver little patches of lighter silver little flecks also of like a darker gray color Despite for the fact it's slightly a little bit more shaded, you can still see dog meat's eyes. Clearly, it does look like that if you compare the two, they probably have gone in and darkened the eye area just a little bit so that the eyes look a little further pushed back. As I said, this is a really neat looking statue. Um, probably one of the contributors to the reasonings why I wanted to have a look at this one specifically was sort of the idea that, uh, of course, I was a big fan of the original Mad Max trilogy and I guess now quadrilogy. And then there, therefore from that, that kind of lended itself right then to the idea of, of getting into the Fallout games. As a result, though, big fan of Dogmeat, even though it's really just like kind of a companion character in the game, it's really neat, though, that Chronicle Collectibles would actually produce something as an actual statue that you could put on display. Being that Chronicle Collectibles were the one that produced the Fallout Dogmeat 1 6 scale statue, one thing you can be guaranteed of is authenticity. With many of the other Chronicle Collectible pieces, something that you probably come to know of nowadays, uh, when they do produce the spectacular statues that you've seen even covered here on this channel, Often at times they're pulling that directly from original models, 3D renderings, and even animatronic pieces like the Kane Robocop that I was lucky enough to review on this channel. But Dogmeat is no exception either. He's not an exception to the rule. In fact, actually, to get this statue that you're looking at right now as authentic as possible, the folks over at Chronicle Collectibles pulled from the original 3D assets of Dogmeat from the game. That means you're gonna be getting as close of a proximity of how Dogmeat looked in the video game as an actual statue, which is pretty cool indeed. This one also is an exclusive with ThinkGeek, which other words, in other words, it means it's an exclusive to places like GameStop, ThinkGeek, and even the official Bethesda store uh, in which you can pick this one up for yourself. The price point on the, depending on where, what market you go to to pick up this one for yourself, the price point for the Fallout Dogmeat 1 6 scale figure is a quite an affordable price of $49.99 or $50 US dollars. For fans of Fallout, you may want to pick this one up for yourself or even one better, even if you're not even a fan of Fallout, but you're a big fan of the dog, the companion dog from the Mad Max Road Warrior film, this is also a great ac accompanying companion piece, if you will, to maybe some of the other collectibles that you currently have on display in your office or in your room. So if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself, as I said, the price point for the Fallout Dog Meat 1 6 scale statue is $49.99. Uh, if you've managed to pick up this one for yourself, or really just based on this review and this review alone, let me know what you guys think down below of the Chronicle Collectibles Think Geek exclusive of the Fallout Dog Meat 1 6 scale uh, display collectible statue. I'm probably going to have to shorten that down, I think, to fit that all in a title. 
Also, if you guys, like I said, wanted to go back and have a look at some of my other Chronicle collectible statue reviews, I've covered ones ranging from different franchises like Robocop, Terminator, and probably most importantly, probably the most covered here on this channel was the various different Jurassic Park statues. So if you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other pieces I've, I've looked at for the folks over at Chronicle Collectibles, there's a playlist specifically just for Chronicle Collectibles. Also, while you're at it, if you're new to this channel or a longtime viewer and never got around to hitting that subscribe button, make it the call. Make it the one thing that you're going to be accomplishing today. Hit that subscribe button and also while you're at it, turn on the bell notification so that when new videos are coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. We're going to have some upcoming statue reviews lined up for this channel, along with a couple of other Chronicle Collectible collectibles. So if you're in the fancy of that, stay tuned to this channel as future videos will be coming very, very soon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.